Primetime Sports with Scott Alexander is underwritten by Task Perform. Crescent City Steakhouse, a true neighborhood restaurant operated by the Vojkovic family since 1934, is the oldest steakhouse in the city of New Orleans. Serving only hand-cut, prime-age, corn-fed beef for over 80 years, Crescent City Steakhouse has become a dining destination for both die-hard locals and adventurous travelers who seek traditional, timeless New Orleans cuisine. Crescent City Steakhouse, 1001 North Broad, on the corner of St. Philip, in the heart of New Orleans. So here's the bottom line. say that. Uh, let me tell you. Good evening and welcome to Primetime Sports. Hey, I'm your host Scott Alexander and tonight is our 140th episode and it's going to be a special one. Like I always say, I can't wait. Hey, we like to call ourselves a sports and entertainment show, but we know our Cup runneth over with the sports down here. And this weekend, football was the epicenter of the, the college and pro football worlds down here in New Orleans and Baton Rouge. And we had a tale of two nights because first on Saturday, it didn't go so well with the LSU Tigers, but them in a second. The Saints, they won their game. The Saints did 45-34. to 34. Michael Thomas, but he had a great game, over 200 yards, a Saints record. He had to make a phone call. He's got some help on the way. He called Des Bryant as well as Brandon Marshall, they're both in, working out for the Saints today. We'll see. Tulane, they won their game 41-15. to Congrats to the Wave. LSU got thumped 29 to nothing. We'll talk more about that later. And the Pelicans, they've lost six in a row. We've got a huge show for you. Stay tuned. Primetime Sports is packed with info. Coming up next. You got me running. You got me hiding. You got me running, hide, running, hide, anywhere you won't let it roll. Yeah, 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 all right, now you know that. You got me doing what you want to, baby, what you want me to do. I'm singing the blues here. You know, Scott, you're going up, yeah, you're going down. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. We, I told you we have a fun show for you. Rockin' Doopsie is going to be on later in the show, and I got to tell you, that guy is electric, if you don't already know. And we got to cover the Saints and the LSU Tigers as much as we might not want to this week, but the Tigers, they'll be back. They've had a great season. It was a tough game. And we're also going to talk about the Pelicans, all that with Associated Press chief writer in Louisiana, Brett Martell. But right now, we got to give credit where credit's due because the Tulane Green Wave, they've had some tough losses this season. But these last two weeks, they've given hope back to all the folks that love the Green Wave. And I have their star linebacker, Zach Harris. He's a tackling machine, and he is on the show. We're leading off because Tulane deserves this love this week. And welcome to the show. Thanks Zach, for having me. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, I actually saw you with my good friend Andrew Doak about a month ago. You did a, I guess y'all walk down the field. I, I don't know what it's called, like something in 20 seconds or something, 120, whatever it was. And I said, man, this guy's entertaining. Uh, where'd you get all that from? I definitely say my dad. He, yeah, he's a jokester, so I got it from him. Well, talk to this. You, 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 you're, you're a local guy. You went to Holy Cross. You West Bank proud. Um, what made you decide to go to the Tulane Green Wave? Uh, it's close to home. That's like the first college game I've been to. I've also known their head, the old previous head coach, uh, CJ, who's Curtis doing, Johnson, doing a great job. A big with the friend Saints. of the show. We love him. And yeah, and so I just fell in love with the school from day one, and I made a great decision. Well, that was a fun fact that you actually grew up next to Curtis Johnson. Yes. I mean, did you get to know him at all before? Oh yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, whenever I'm at my house, I'm always stopping by. To, uh, you know chatting up with him, talking about the Saints, talking about Tulane. So he's just all-around great family guy. Yeah, he is. He, he's a great guy. An ambassador for uh, his city. And by the way, I think I think he had a birthday, a birthday. Maybe his wife had a birthday recently. Anyway, let's talk about your current coach, Willie Fritz. Uh, I love Willie. He's been on the show at least five times. What was the transition like? I know offense, it was, it was dramatic because they went from a pro-style offense to 
you know, more of an option style. Now they, they throw a little more. But what was it like on defense? I don't, I don't think a lot of people have a grasp of what the difference was for you going from coaching staffs uh, for the linebacker position. Um, it wasn't too hard to transition. Uh, a lot of the guys on our team were very versatile. Uh, we've played, a lot of us played safety, linebacker, moved around position-wise. So the transition from the coaching chain wasn't that hard for all of us. All right. You know, there were high hopes coming in. And, you know, some of these games are so close, you get down to the wire and you're like, I mean, what's it like in that locker room when you lose a close one that you feel like you should have had? Because I just know the, it's, it's crazy. You will always remember the great wins, but for some reason those close losses stick with you. What is, what's it like, you know, when you have these hopes and then they, they just come down right at the end? Oh, that was, that's tough, especially those close losses. And, you know, each game by game, you only get 12 of them. So each opportunity and those close losses that you lose is very tough for the team. But you just, it's, it's all about that bounce back at the end of the day. You got to just chalk that up, you know, see what you went on, see what happened wrong, and move on to the next week. Well, you've had two great wins in a row, and I want to talk about last week in particular. Some of these highlights were showing. Um, I have a bunch from the game against South Florida. You went in mm -hmm. on the road as an underdog. I think most of the country was not expecting to win. Not only did you win, you demoralized the opponent 41 to 15. Uh, kind of take us through that game and, and what, it take, what it took to win that game. Um, at the end of the day, everyone all thought of, you know, had us as the underdog, all rooting against us, thought Tulane was going to lose and whatnot. So we just used that as our fuel. We went out there with a no-care attitude and said, hey, we're going to just play our game today, and it worked out for us. Well, listen, two and five, now you're four and five. Now the, the, the bowl hopes are back. I know y'all never lost hope no, of it. No. Of course not, but it's right there for you. I mean, what's it going to take coming into these next three games? Because none of them are going to be easy, but I think you look at them and you think, hey, I got a chance to win all these, and you probably think you will win them all. Just about keeping up the momentum, keeping up the hype. Uh, that's what our coach, Willie, he stresses on a whole lot, just everybody believing in the team and playing for each other. Hey, I got to tell you this, as a, as a guy that does shows, you got to do a lot of research, but sometimes that also involves stalking. So uh, I had to stalk a little bit. I stalked your, your, your Twitter page. Uh, I know during the season you're not super active, but one thing I did notice, you love your car. You really <laughs> love your car because, and by the way, you're a graduate already. I have to give you props on that from a prestigious university like Tulane. You already got your fifth-year guy, but you got a lot of shots with that car. Tell us about your relationship <laughs> with your automobile. Oh, man, I just love cars in general, uh, especially I have two cars. I have a Nissan 350Z. Now, I'm assuming that they didn't just catch that shot of you on the phone, that that, that was – that was uh, more like, hey, I'm going to pretend I'm on the phone. Catch me on a picture. <laughs> right. I wish you could catch him right now. He's laughing. All right. But, yeah, I, I love cars. I love old school cars. Uh, I got the 92 Fox Body Mustang because my friend also has one. So uh -huh. we're trying to get, like, a little car club going on. You got a car club? Yeah. What it's, kind it's of cars? What kind of, those, that's a sweet ride you got there. What kind of cars do you like the most? Like, when you make it one day, what's, what's going to be that toy you have? Oh, old school Mustangs. The old car school. The car club's going to be called 504. 504. Like 504. F-O-H. But F-E-A-U-X, like the New Orleans Oh, Wallace okay, style. okay, Dominic. okay. 504. Yeah. I got it. Now, are you doing some modeling here, too? Because I'm assuming that that light on that shot, that, that just didn't come off natural. Oh, another interesting fact. All Shout right. out to my brother. He just got in the U.S. Well, he's at USC freshman year. He just got a he, UFO? No, no, no. He's at USC <laughs> oh, okay. film school. Southern California? Yes. Nice. Oh, and for film school. It's so. amazing film school out there. I know. So we're just practicing with some of his equipment and whatnot, and he just decided to take well, a picture. Well, let's give him a shout-out. Out. What's his name? Uh, Lucky Luke Films. Look it up on YouTube. Lucky Luke Films. That's a plug. Yes. Hey, by the way, uh, we're on in pockets of California. Okay. I, it's random because, uh, you know, we're all over the south on CST, and we're all in the entire states, Louisiana, Arkansas. Not the entire south, but most of it from Austin to Panama City. But I get calls from people in L.A. that say, dude, I see your show every once in a while. I'm like, that's random. And I said, you must catch it on YouTube. But, though, no, they catch it on Cox okay. out there. Hey, uh, the other thing is we're, we're full of fun facts with you. The I, One thing I did find out from watching you on Doke's show was that you are a great golfer. You love the game of golf. And at one time, that was your primary sport. Yeah, my dad, he got me into it, I'll say around four or five years old. As yeah. soon as I could start swinging a golf club, that's all I played. And then, but, you know, golf is 
very slow sport. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, after a while, I just kind of faded that out and started focusing mainly on football. Do you still pick up the club once in a while? Every now and then, uh, I plan on playing in the two lanes uh, scramble they have. I haven't played in it the whole entire time I've been at Tulane. Right, 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 right. I need to bring those skills back out. I had a whole lot of coaches talking about how they could, you know, beat me and whatnot. But well, here's one thing about golf I've learned because I played a lot in the 90s before I had kids and then I tried to play after not playing for a decade. You do have to pick it up. and It's not like basketball where I can, I feel like I can shoot oh, yeah. and still make jump shots all day. Golf is a little different. Cause, uh, so make sure you get a couple practice rounds in oh, before. Yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely Especially will. if you want to run our mouth a little bit like I, <laughs> like I imagine we both like to do. Hey, um, on the football field, though, what's next for this green wave? you got three big games coming up. What can we expect? And I love seeing, you know, you're a New Orleans guy like Rod Teamer. He went to Brother Martin. Uh, you guys stayed in town and wanted to play for the hometown team. Talk about that and then talk about the three games coming up. Uh, we are the team of New Orleans, and we will represent New Orleans very well this weekend. Uh, big opponent, ECU. Homecoming. East Carolina. It's homecoming. It is. That's right. That's right. What time is that game, by the way? Uh, 3.30, if I'm correct. Uh, 3 o'clock. See, I love these shots of Yulman. Um, when Yulman has got the people in it, it is. I don't think there's anything much better because it's it's an intimate atmosphere and it's a beautiful stadium. Uh, you, like, I'm trying to think the year it started. Were you? Was that your first year? When it, second year. Your second. So you played in the dome uh, one year. First year, first year, correct, right? First year for you. So you've only played in Yulman. Talk about you know y'all y'all the ones that intro Yulman in. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about that. I mean because you know. The, for years, they had to go downtown, and it just didn't have that same feel. Now you're in a campus stadium like it was in the good old days when they had Sugar Bowl Stadium, Tulane Stadium. Uh, but it's a lot smaller, and it, and it fits the needs for Tulane a lot better. Yeah, the uh, stadium, very nice, perfect size for our team. Um, has great culture in there, and just all, all around electrifying. Great food. Oh, yeah, that's Great too. drink. Um, and, hey, by the way, the campus life at Tulane is unique. In the sense, I mean, you grew up in New Orleans, so you kind of feel it, but like the Mardi Gras beach right there. When the Mardi Gras, um, talk about what it's like to be, because I know that Willie Fritz and Mike Dunleavy and all the coaches I've had on, obviously Travis Jewett as well, they stress the fact that it's not a four-year degree that you're getting a scholarship for. It's a 40-year degree. It's a life experience. It's something that's going to take you through life. Talk about what Tulane's degree means to you and what it's going to mean for your future and what you want to do in the future. And that's... Probably the main reason why I chose Tulane, the academic side of it. You know, you can only play football for so long, but an academic degree from Tulane, that's just, that's worth, a, you know, for the rest of your life. No doubt, no doubt. But what about the campus life? Oh, camp li campus life is great. Uh, a lot of culture, great food all around Tulane's campus, and great, and all around great people there as well. Hey, the helmets, I got to say, because the the, you have an angry wave shirt. By the way, that shirt's tight. <laughs> Willie, I need one of those shirts. Uh, we can do some trades. But no, that shirt is phenomenal. That angry wave has just kind of taken the city by storm. People love it. Um, you know, talk about the transition from the old helmets to this one. And do the players like it as much as us fans do? Oh, absolutely. And that, that angry wave right there it just symbolizes the change in our program and the change that we need and head into the right direction. Now, you had a wild one on a couple of weeks ago. I think I have a picture. Yeah, this one here. This <laughs> one I was – was this the Memphis game? It was, it was recent, but I it saw was. this and I was like – Memphis, by the way, huge win. I mean, you went on the road and throttled a team that, that, that beats up on people. Um, that's another great road win. Maybe you all like just playing on the road better. <laughs> but that helmet is just – it just kind of caught me off guard because it's kind of – what do you all call that one? It's like the close-up angry wave. Oh, yeah. Well, shouts out to our equipment manager, Devin. Uh, he came up with the design, and we all love it. All right. Give his last name, because possibly I might get a shirt out of Devin if you do that. Devin Hubbard. <laughs> all right. All right. But, uh, Matt, but I've seen you all have different – I mean, Tulane's budget must be growing, because it's not just that one. You have different variations. I saw a different – was there a silver one recently, too? Uh, they changed the face mask style. Okay. Is that what's going on? Yes. Uh, can you give us a hint about maybe what's going to happen for homecoming? To be honest, I don't even know yet. you got to look at Twitter. Oh, Twitter. That's how I find well, out. Well, give us the Twitter say. What is that, Tulane Athletics? Uh, is that Greenway at Greenway FB. FB Correct. stands for football, of course. Um, by the way, the Greenway family, when things are rolling, it really doesn't get a whole lot better uh, with, the, with the fan support here. I really mm -hmm. love, like, 
just everybody they get so fired up even with the inkling of having some hope oh yeah uh, our fans are like no other through thick and thin they're always there and by the way do you, i have a question because uh when you when you deal with other athletes from other sports obviously mm -hmm. Um, what's the relationship on campus with like the football players and the basketball players and the baseball team? How does everybody get along there? Oh, since Tulane is such a small campus, we mm -hmm. all know each other. I mean, sometimes I'll hang out with the basketball players, baseball players. It's like a one big, huge family. You talked about getting that degree. What do you want to do in the future with it? Like, what's your, what's your life goal? You know, what do you want to be as, as an adult, I guess? You're an adult now, but when you get yeah. to be older. Well, currently I'm in grad school to be, well, in Homeland Security, and I plan on becoming an FBI special agent. Wow. Yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, what's, <laughs> what's that mean? I mean, a special agent, you're just going to, like, you're, you're going to be like like the born guys? Born, <laughs> the old, I hope born it's something like that, to be honest. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you're going to be the action guy or you're going to be the guy behind the desk? How's it going to oh, work? Oh, the action guy. You're going to be the action guy? I didn't get all these muscles for nothing. Well, I can't get, yeah, that's right. Give us a little flex what you got right there. There he is. There we he got is. you. We got you. We don't, need, we don't even need to do it in person. I can't give you the gift certificates. That's the NCAA rule. But this is, this is uh, a guy that is a legend at Tulane. By the way, Al Andrews, who owns this, here's a little tribute for you. Well, back in the day when Tulane was in the SEC, they got out in the 60s. I don't know if you even knew that. But Al was the last all-SEC athlete, certainly in basketball. And he's the owner of Task Performance. And okay. he lives right around the corner. You can hit a, since you play golf, you can hit a nine iron from the really stadium to that. his house on Audubon Boulevard and enjoy that. Can you feel it? I want you to get your opinion on it. Honest opinion. I haven't let you see this before. Have you, have you worn any of these before? I have. Oh, these you do? Best. Okay, and so this is These are idiot. actually the best shirts to work out in. Seriously. They're very exorbitant. I'm with you on that. No type of sweat marks. Great shirts. Hey, Louisiana, I didn't tell him to say that either at all. We, this oh, yeah. is all... <laughs> this is all organic. I appreciate you, man. Oh, yeah. I wish you the best me. of luck. And I got to say, I'm on the road every weekend, but whenever I see Tulane, I, I, I do all the games. I'm looking up and down. When I see Tulane's winning or has a win, a big smile comes to my face. So I'm very happy for you. Okay, we truly appreciate it. All right, keep that roll going. A great ambassador for the, for the city of New Orleans, the state of Louisiana, and particularly Tulane University. He is a green wave at heart, and he will be a special agent one day. I have no doubt about it. Hey, good luck for the wave this week against the ECU Pirates in their homecoming. Get out there and support that team. They do deserve it. Hey, coming up next, we're going to have, we're going to switch gears to music. Rockin' Doopsie. Man, I love this guy. His dad was the original king and prince of Zydeco music, and he's taking it to another level with his Zydeco Twister band. He's got his brothers in the band. They're carrying on the family tradition. He's going to come up. And don't forget, Saints fans, I got you covered. I know this 7-1 start is one of the best in Saints history, uh, maybe even second, only to 2009. Maybe 2011 was a great one, too, but this team has special uh, uh, goals on their horizon. We're going to talk to Brett Martell from the Associated Press all about that. And, yes, LSU fans, we've got to talk about that game as well and what can LSU get off the mat. And, of course, the Pelicans are having a tough run as well. All that's coming up later with Brett Martell. Hey, you're watching Primetime Sports. Stay tuned. Primetime Sports with Scott Alexander is underwritten by Task Performance. Embracing New Orleans soul with style and fashion wear from NolaShirts.com. Show off your love for one of America's unique cities with belts, shirts, and hats in a variety of colors and styles. NolaShirts.com proudly celebrates the culture and embodies the spirit and determination of the people from the Crescent City. Tradition lives on at NolaShirts.com. The owners of the Delachaise Wine Bar on St. Charles Avenue have opened up their newest creation uptown on Maple Street called Chez Delachaise, a new local wine bistro featuring a larger menu of small and large plates, a brighter atmosphere, and full table service. Additionally, patrons can enjoy a large patio out front as well as an extensive wine list offering selections from around the world. It's Chez Delachaise, 7708 Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Rock and roll will never die. It's old New Orleans, my oh my. Come on, baby, let's go rock and roll at the city lane. Oh my, let's roll, let's rock and roll. Baby, do the rock and roll at the mid city lane, the home of rock and roll.
Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. And like I said in the open, man, the, the name makes you think that this is all sports, but I pride myself on making this a sports and entertainment show. There's so much great culture down here in South Louisiana and all over the state, really, particularly in the New Orleans area, that I like to have musicians. We have had a ton of them on. You know all of them from the, you know, from Fred LeBlanc, from Cowboy Mouth to Little Freddie King. We got all genres here. But we also like to have restaurateurs, uh, artists, even the governor. We have a lot of fun. But, man, when I heard that I might have a shot at getting Rockin' Doopsy Jr., I was like, let's do this. <laughs> and I can't wait because uh, his dad was certainly the king of Zydeco, Rockin' Doopsy, but he has made a name for himself. He's got the Rockin' Doopsy Jr. and the Zydeco Twisters. And if you've never seen them, boy, you are, get prepared to shake your hips and shake your booty a little bit because you're going to have some fun. It's Zydeco, but it's also a lot of popular mainstream music and, uh, and, and dance music, and you're going to have a good time. And here he is for the first time on Primetime Sports. It's going to be here. Rock. What's up? Doopsy. Hey, it's going to be Don't call time. me Dopsy. Don't call me Dopsy. It's call Doopsy. me Doopsy. There it's you Doopsy. go. Call me Doopsy. What's up, my man? I'm good, man. How you doing? Fantastic. It's going to be here. It is good. It's good to have you. I love the hat. I love the look. Uh, well, tell me, the, this look is trademark you. You got the guns showing. Yeah. You got the vest. You got the apron. Tell me how this look came about. Well, actually, this look came about back in the late 70s. You know, uh... I was playing with my father. You must have been like three years old. Yeah, I was playing with my father as a, I was playing with my father as a kid, man. And uh, my father, everybody knew Rock and Doopsy Senior. You know, uh, he he was the accordion player. Yeah, and, there he and, is, right there. Yeah, and that that that's it. And his he had his cousin, his name was Chester Zeno. They called him Shorty. Uh huh. And I don't know how he did it, man. But I should have bought some of the pictures. What he did, he take a table, and and he put it in his mouth. And he'd hold it up while he played a washboard right. and he'd do the same thing with the chair. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got diabetes, had his legs amputated, man. And, and my dad said, okay, you're the next man up. You know, so uh, I knew I couldn't pick up a chair or a table with my teeth or anything. And he said, well, you got to have a gimmick. So that's when I popped on a cowboy hat, sunglasses, you know, uh, the apron and the cowboy boots. And I knew I could have do a little James Brown stuff. So that was that was my thing. There's your apron, man. You that got is. that apron that on. Is. I got it on. There I mean, that is kind of your thing, right? That's my trademark. I yeah. like it. That's I like my it. Thing. Well, that's you do the washboard. And we, we, we had a shot of you earlier uh, yeah. in one of our bumps. Um, now, your dad did the accordion. Now, you kind of, you lead off with the washboard. Tell me how that got going. Well, actually, you know, my first instrument playing as a kid, I was uh, playing snare drums. Mm -hmm. And my oldest brother, Tiger, who also played with me and played with my father sure. before I came right. into the band, he was a drummer. Uh -huh. But I play all percussion instruments, drums, snare, congas, and everything. And uh, then my dad gave me the washboard in 1979. I was, you know, a kid, and that, that that's how I started with the washboard. And then playing the washboard, man, you know, it's a stainless steel instrument. Yes. So it would nick up my pants and, right. and, and everything and yeah. when I danced. So that's when, that's, I got, I, I, that's when I got the apron. But then not only it seals my, my pants from being straight, like when I'm performing yeah. and my hand's sweating, yeah. I can I can, you can wipe them off. All I can, right. Yeah, I can wipe my hand off on my apron instead of running back to the drum rods to get my towel. That way I can keep the crowd entertained. So it's not just good looking; it's practical as well. Well, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's that smooth thing, you know. I'm gonna tell you, I, I've seen you a few times. I've seen you put on different kind of shows. I've seen you go the Zydeco route, and then I saw you recently where you just burned out like all this Earth, Wind, and Fire, Commodores. Gap Band, Rick James, you had it going on, so you kind of catered to the crowd, right? Yeah, actually, you know, my uh, my title is Zydeco, right? But it should be Zydeco Rhythm and Blues. There it is. Because because growing up, you know, I uh, I listened to guys like Prince, Michael Jackson, sure. the Gap Band. Earth, Wind, and Fire, Casey and the Sunshine Band, you know, guys like that, Chicago, Michael Jackson, you know, and uh, when I was performing with my father before I'd bring him on stage, I was doing a lot of that R&B stuff. So then when, after his passing, I just kept that up. And now I do, like, doing festivals and stuff. I don't do a lot of Zodico, Zodico Festival, yeah, right. because they want pure Zodico. Yeah, they want pure Zodico. Like my buddy John yeah, yeah. Blanchard at Rock and Bowl. Yes. He loved what I do. Johnny I love Blanchard, John. Rock Johnny and Bowl. Blanchard. That's for you, Johnny. He's Johnny good. always told me, say, Rock, look, man, I have Zodico night every Thursday night. Yeah. He said, but the people that come to Zodico, they want to hear Zodico. They right. say Rock and Dupes, they don't play enough Zodico. Right. <laughs> but you see, for me, I love Zodico music. That, 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 that's in my, in that's my book. Blood, but I think you play... Zydeco all night long, too much Zydeco, 
to me, it, it just get the crowd out of it. So you got to throw a little old school Otis Redding, Sam Cooke, little James Brown, little Michael Jack, little Gap Band, little Rick James, you know. See, Gap Band is one of the most underrated bands yeah, of all and you time know, to me. And you know, playing Zydeco music, you can incorporate the, the washboard and the cardigan with, with what you're doing, you know, because uh, when my father was living, we did the Graceland album with Paul Simon. How amazing is that? One um, of the greatest albums ever produced. Yeah, period. I mean, I mean, it was great. I, I'll never forget, man, we were playing. Your dad had to say, who's Paul Simon? Yeah, my dad didn't know who <laughs> Paul Simon was. Right. We were playing at uh, Tramps uh -huh. in, in, in New York City, and uh, it was it was, it was was Jimmy Buffett, Paul Simon, Bette Midler. Wow. Uh, came to the show, and uh, Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. She the one that introduced my father, because Paul Simon was going around the globe trying to put this grace. Yeah, I know thing Bonnie together. Ray was big with them too. Yeah, yeah. she really was. Yeah. And uh, Paul Simon came to the show, and and he liked it. And my father was from Karen Crow, spoke a little English, spoke a lot of French. A lot of but, great people but, in Karen. Yeah, but he never knew who Paul Simon was Simon and Garfunkel. Right. So I had to let him know. And it's a funny story. Paul Simon came to Lafayette uh -huh. and we recorded the Graceland song sure. at J.D. Miller Studio out in uh, Crowley, Louisiana. And uh, next thing you know, it was, it was on the record. And when Graceland hit, you know, my dad got a Grammy gold platinum album from it. So Paul Simon called my father. You know how those old guys were back in the day. Yeah, yeah. He said, rock. And he said, look, man, uh, he said, they want us to do the song that was your mother on Saturday Night Live. Right, right. And my dad was like, okay, cool. So he said, what's the date? So Paul Simon gave him the date, wherever the date was. But my dad already had himself in the band book at a church hall. Oh, my goodness. St. Francis Church Hall in Houston, Texas. So my dad turned down that oh, so to play at the church that, for the church. He he's said, hey, look, he's he said, a, yeah, he said, look, I gave the priest my word, Paul. He said, and that was it. So uh, we never got a chance to perform the song with Paul Simon uh, while my father was living. But back in maybe about five or six years ago, when Simon and Garfunkel performed at Jazz Fest, I got to perform on stage. I got to tell them. you this. I didn't think about this till just now because you're getting animated and, and you got your glasses trademark look. But sometimes when you look up at me, I'm getting a little glimpse of your eyes. Does anybody ever say you look a little like Martin Lawrence? Man, a lot of people tell me. Man, <laughs> because people say, I'm looking at you. People like, tell me I look like Martin Lawrence. They tell me I look like Cat Williams. Oh, Cat Williams. I, uh, it's <laughs> crazy, Cat man. Williams. You know, Rick James. I'm yeah. like, no. The, 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 I'm Rick James, the, the, B. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell that to a lot of people, you know. I, right. I felt bad because I told that to a lady one time in the elevator. We were somewhere, and this lady actually said, you look familiar. I know you. I said, yeah, I'm Rick James. I'm Rick and, James. and the guys in the band, just, they just bust That's out funny. laughing. But at, at least she had, a, uh, she had a great sense of humor, you know. All so right. it was good. I want to get into some of these people you play with, but I want to ask you. A lot of people hear Zydeco and, uh -huh. and hear what it is. What is Zydeco? What are the roots and where did it come from? Well, Zydeco... Was before it was called Zydeco, it was called La La Music. Yeah. And when my father in Clifton Chenier yeah. was playing the Zydeco music, the La La Music back in the day, it's like, okay, where you going tonight? We're going to hear the La La Music. So they go just the carding it in the washboard. And let's say, Scott, I'm coming to your house on Saturday night. My dad said, I he, love for you too. Yeah. He said they take <laughs> all, all the furniture out of the living room and they charge 25 cents to go to the La La. So back in the late 50s, early 60s, they started Clifton Chenier put a, 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 a drummer, bass, and guitar. It's all like all rhythm and blues roots, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's when they named the music Zydeco. And in French, Zydeco is a snap bean. That's what it is in French, Zydeco. So when you hear the music, you're snapping, oh, you're snapping. your snapping, okay. Yeah, so all it's right. a snap bean. So that's, what, that's the symbol. That's the word Zydeco in French is snap bean. So if you're not moving... While you're listening to Zydeco, man, you got a hole in your soul. You ain't rocking right. A hole you know? in your soul. You yeah. know what? I guarantee you at least 80% of our audience, including myself, did not know exactly the, the roots of Zydeco, and you just filled us all in. Really? Really? Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, I, mean, I could be wrong on that. Hey, but hey, let's talk about this. Beyonce. Uh -huh. uh, you play with Jimmy Buffett. I mean, B.B. Uh -huh. King. I mean, the list goes on and on. You, As a kid growing up in Karen Crow or Lafayette area, you had to... This is big time. It, it, it was, man, because growing up as a kid, you know, I mean, when B.B. King would come to Lafayette, he'd stop by the house, visit my father. Are my you mama, kidding me? Are my you mama kidding would me? cook gumbo. Uh, the late Gate Mount Brown, he, oh, yeah. you know, he, he, he'd come by the house. Uh, 
all the old blues guys would come up, and that's how I met uh, Lightning Hopkins, you know? Lightning Hopkins. Uh, yeah, Lightning Hopkins and uh, yeah, Guitar bro. Slim Sr. Me and Guitar Slim Jr., we played together as little kids running in the yard while our father was in the backyard talking music. I had little Freddie smoking. King on a couple months ago, and Lightning Hopkins was one of his guys he looked up to, even uh, though they weren't uh, that far apart in age. Oh, man, Light Lightning was one of the... Uh, now, him and Clifton Chenier was first cousins. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This is all ancestors. Well, what was it like being? How about this? The White House lawn. Didn't you guys play there? Yeah, for, we for, played. We played for, on the Bill White Clinton? House lawn for uh, Bill Clinton, and how I got to do that was God rest his soul, the late great Harry Lee. Harry Lee. You know, he he threw yeah. a fade do do, and also uh, the late great uh, Al Copeland. He did all the catering. You know, Those went up there with Harry Lee and Johnny right Fortunata okay. and Lil Hunter Hayes from Bo Bridge, the country singer. You know, and he was about 10 years old. He played, and that was a brass band here right from here. New Orleans. What we got working that, on here? Yeah, that was that was the girl. That was the girls from next door. Good thing you had your sunglasses yeah. on because your eyes are focusing. Yeah, the Playboy <laughs> model girls. There you uh, go. We did a show at the House of Blues. For, they they came in. The girls next door played ball for Mardi Gras one night uh, for uh, Lundi Gras. And we did a show in the parish. It was it was it was a wild night. I stayed out partying with those girls. And oh yeah, I bet that was a good night. It was a great was that, night. Was that it a good was, night? You smiling? It was a great. It must night. have been good. Yeah, peace out, say bon. Yeah, my God. Yeah, toi. It was a good night. All right. All right. Uh, what, 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 where are you playing in South Louisiana coming up? I mean, I want I want people to get out. Well, this Saturday, I'm 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 doing a festival this Saturday morning in Thibodeau, and uh, after that, I uh, I go to New York next week. I'll be in New York for a week. And I have a lot of private events during the month of December, uh, like a lot of Christmas parties. Right on, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Stuff like that. And, yeah, they pay uh, well at those stuff. Yeah, they pay big money for that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have to go to Tampa to do a, a, a huge insurance company Christmas party. But then after that, I'll be all over the city for Mardi yeah. Gras. Just you know, check I'll it be out. all around the state of Louisiana. Just go to my website. You know, I'm like a stop sign. I'm everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, baby. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's a stop sign in every, every county, every hey, parish. There you go. Parish. There you go. Uh, what's your favorite venues of all time? I'm talking about around the world. My, my, if I had to say my favorite, my favorite venue around the world, honestly, yeah. and I've been everywhere from Brazil to Jamaica, uh, Australia, I think my favorite venue is playing Jazz Fest here in Louisiana. Because, you know, you go out and you play all these Mine different too, countries. By the way. Yeah, you play all <laughs> these different countries. And you and, and you know you meet all these great musicians and, and get a great response, but man, there's nothing like playing in your own home crowd. There's I mean, the Louisiana right people, there. yeah, they. I, I, I mean, we that was. I mean, I, I look, at, look at Cyril, Cyril. Neville. Yeah, Cyril. <laughs> and, Cyril. And, and that's the thing about playing jazz fest. You never know who's gonna jump on stage right, right. with you. You know, you may have somebody like Cyril Neville or, or Bonnie Raitt or, or, or somebody like Jimmy Buffett or somebody. One year. Uh, during Jazz Fest. You remember the late, great Ad Bradley from 60 oh, Minutes? Oh, of course, yeah. I'd see him on stage with uh, Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, him and Jimmy no. Buffett joined me and my father on stage, and it was so funny because Jimmy Buffett was playing the congas, and Ad Bradley was playing the, the washboard, and he didn't know the song to Jambalaya. I remember I remember this. And I was his, there. His mouth was just and That's moving. like one of the first times Ed Bradley showed off his earring. That's Ed right. Ed Bradley was so serious. That's right. On 60 Minutes, I'm like, look at that with the hey, earring man. working hey, 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 man, he was one of the sweetest people in the world, man. Uh, one of the most intelligent, too. Yeah, very and, smart, and, very and, smart. And the world is definitely not a better place when he left it. I, I totally agree, man. You know, it... it a lot of Louisiana musicians, man, not only in New Orleans, from around the globe, they just bring out certain things in people. Uh, we got so much music, our culture. I mean, Louisiana is just, I mean, who would have thought, you know, Beyonce would have called me to perform with How amazing is that? Look at these albums. Awards. I got my mojo working. We're going to throw a few of these up there. Yeah, man. Zedco, man, you've, you've you done know, some a lot great of stuff. A lot of people say, Rock and Deuce, you don't age. You know, they say I still look the same. That, that that's from staying up partying all night. You know what I'm saying? You look good. You give up? Thank you, man. You, you can't give good. up. Yeah, I, don't I mean, party every night. But I mean, know, we're I'm, only three months apart, and I'm that's like, right. I look like I could be your uncle. No, man, you look like <laughs> you look like you'd be my baby brother. Hey, man. right on. Hey, by the way, uh, I don't have many musicians on this ball because I have a bunch of balls that are signed, and I do have one because I only put the most special in my mind. I have oh, ET because he's one of my closest well, guys from go. 30 Dozen Brass Band. There but I'm going to put you on this ball hey, with Archie Manning ball, man. and, right. uh, and uh, some of the greats we have here. This, my man, is Rocket Doopsie Jr. We have a couple special gifts 
thanking you for taking your time. I know you've got a busy, busy schedule. Man, thanks for hey, having you me. check out, this is called Delachaise, Shays Delachaise and Delachaise, part of Delachaise family. Oh, okay, this great. one's on uh, Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Enjoy yourself a nice glass Thank of wine, you. nice meal. And by the way, here, this shirt, I don't know if you've ever tried Task Performance, but this is the softest stuff I've ever put oh, wow. on my body. Wow. And I know you like, hey, that might be, I know you work out. Yeah, man, I do. This and is nice. I I'm, could perform with this, man. Yeah, man. And if you yeah. need a tighter one to shove those guns off, I can get you another one, too. Yeah, man. All I right. <laughs> I'm good. Hey, how about your brother Dwayne and the rest of your brother? Yeah. You mentioned Tiger. Yeah, Tiger. Me and Tiger have been There's playing Dwayne together. Dwayne right there. Yeah, me and Tiger have been playing together for 31 years. A lot of people think Dwayne is my son, right. but that's my baby brother. Yeah. That's the youngest brother of the band. And then my brother Anthony, who's right here, he uh, took the place of my father when my I father see. passed. I see. So, the, so it's Tiger, myself, Anthony, then Dwayne's the baby brother. You're the best. Hey. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. I hey, appreciate man, keep you. on doing what you're doing, man, because uh, you're keeping us all up on what's going on in the sports world. And I do think if the Saints keep on grinding and play smart football, hey, man, who knows? We might be dancing, you know, might be all be dancing in Atlanta. We're going to be dancing Come regardless. January. But we're going to be dancing in Atlanta. How great would it be? I was shocked when you told me you watched the show some. I love it. Yeah, man, I'm a fan. Yeah, man, I'm a <laughs> I'm fan. I'm a fan, too. I love it. Well, I right. appreciate it. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. That's Doopsy. Not Doopsy, not Dopsy. It's Doopsy. It's Rockin' Doopsy. Doopsy. There, there he is. Go. And put the junior behind it. Hey, coming up next, we're going to talk all about those Saints. Because that's right, I have, for the first time ever, the head Associated Press writer here in Louisiana. He covers all the big events. Brett Martell is coming up next to talk Saints. Eh, LSU and Pelicans not doing so great now, but hey, they're going to they're gonna end up with great seasons at the end. And we're going to talk all about that. And don't forget, I want to thank my man from the Tulane Green Wave who was here earlier, Zach Harris. We're coming up. We're going to have Brett Martell next on Primetime Sports. You can call me rockin', uh, don't call me Dobson. You can call me Doopsin, don't call me Dobson. I've been to school, uh, I ain't no fool. I wear the crown, cause I'm zotty cool. Cause I'm zotty cool, I'm zotty cool. I wear the crown, cause I'm zotty cool. You can call me Doopsin. Welcome back to Primetime Sports. Hey, how about Rocket Doopsy just now? What energy that man has. And you can see him all over the state of Louisiana and beyond. He plays all over the world. And, of course, Zach Harris, Tulane linebacker. Tulane's on a roll right now. But, wow, we're going to talk a little bit about the teams you love the most down here. LSU, they took it on the chin this week. And the Pelicans aren't playing great. But how about the New Orleans Saints? They're now 7-1. and one, And they have a little gauntlet of games they are, are Steadily getting through, and they've got a few more to go. Cincinnati next this week, the Philadelphia Eagles coming up, and of course you got Carolina a couple of times, and those pesky Falcons. But here to talk about all that is Louisiana Associated Press sports writer. His name is Brett Martell. If there's a big event, you can guarantee Brett will be at it. He was at both of them this weekend up in Tiger Stadium, and of course the Superdome on Sunday. And here he is for the first time on Primetime Sports. Brett, hey, welcome to the show, my man. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well. Nice to be on. I see you everywhere, and uh, I want people to kind of get an idea of what an Associated Press guy does. You're the guy, and you're at the big events, but kind of explain, you know, where you go and why you go. Okay. Well, the AP was founded in 1846. It was some newspapers basically in New York and D.C. that, you know, um, that wanted to share resources covering wars and stuff like sure. that, and then right. it grew over time. And so essentially it's headquartered in New York City um, uh, downtown. And I'm kind of a sports correspondent to the world from New Orleans. So my territory is Louisiana. And any major thing that's going on, whether it's the IndyCar race a couple of years ago or the PGA tournament every spring, uh, ranked football and basketball games in the AP Top 25 or the NFL or the NBA, I've got to be there and make sure that that coverage is disseminated to news outlets around the world that don't have their own people here. Right, so I'm right, not necessarily right. writing for a local audience. I'm writing more from a neutral point of view. Sure. You know, what was the most compelling thing that happened in the game? Who won? Why they won? No homerism. 
Uh, at all. Well, you know, <laughs> during the week when I'm not covering a game, I'm generally covering practice. Right. So I, I'm kind of like uh, writing from more of a beat writer's perspective when I'm doing features sure. and reports of developments on the roster and things like that. But when I'm covering a game, I've got to research the visiting team and I've got to act, you know, I've got to kind of just, you know, play it down the middle. This is your debut on Primetime Sports. So before we get into what's going on with the local teams, I. I want to get to know the person just a little bit. Where are you from? How did you get to New Orleans? How do you like being in the Crescent City? How long have you been here? Sure. Uh, I was born in Maine uh, and uh, lived there until I was 18 years old. Right. Then I um, went to Boston University, uh, spent uh, one of my years in Paris, You're France. a terrier. Yes, I'm a terrier. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, in fact, I think Boston University is playing LSU maybe in women's soccer or something like oh, that. Oh, great. <laughs> only, <laughs> if you, only if you're terrier would know that. <laughs> but uh, I just got an email about it, you know, it's an alumni thing. But anyway, um, I, so I went into, you know, I was an international relations major at Boston University, studied overseas. Mm -hmm. I, I speak a little French. I came from a French part of Maine and got into the Associated Press with the notion that I could maybe be a foreign correspondent one day, and which I am, because I live in Louisiana, right? And that has nothing to do with the rest of the United States. No, I hear you, no, it's 100% <laughs> <So, laughs> accurate. But um, yeah, I came down here as actually, I moved here with the idea that it would be kind of a stepping stone to a, you know, going to the international desk and going overseas. And I just, I remember some people when I moved down here said, this is gonna be your kind of place, you're gonna love it, you're never gonna leave. And I used to smile, and politely so, and yeah, say, yeah, sure. maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. Right. maybe I'll never leave. So that was 1999 when I moved here. Oh my gosh, and 20 years now. Yeah, and then I ended up marrying local. And now you're stuck here. You're for, you're for good. Right, and my, yeah, and my daughter goes to the same school that my wife went to, and so, you know, it's... So you're a trench, man. That's kind of the deal, yeah. Uh, I have, before I get to the sports here, what part of... Uh, I lived in, in southern France for a bit. Uh, I was in Paris. Uh, you're in Paris. Paris. Uh -huh. It was like Aix-en-Provence, a little further south but than you. People used to say, oh, you're from Maine, must be culture shock living down here and I would say well the names in the phone book are all the same of course that doesn't work anymore in 1999 we still yeah. had phone books right 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 right, right, right. <laughs> no, phone one, book. no one uses I that I miss the big old phone book but, uh, all right you see these balls we're going to start on the positive side right here because these two aren't doing so well as of last week uh -huh. but right here the Saints they're doing great seven and one you were in the dome kind of give people that weren't there a feel for what it was like on Sunday uh the it, it, you know I've been in a lot of atmospheres like that but it was definitely one of the bigger game kind of electric atmospheres it was similar to a primetime game you know it was a late afternoon game against an undefeated team you know the team that had all the buzz and it was an opportunity for the Saints um, to kind of make a statement and establish themselves as a you know a legitimate Super Bowl contender now you know they didn't win that game by a lot really I mean they won by 10 points but they also blew a three touchdown lead and uh, and they've been pretty close in a couple other games, so you know it's it's been really, it's been a compelling season, uh, and I think Saints fans should be thrilled that they've won seven straight and are seven and one and have the inside track to the number one seed. But you know you just you can't assume anything right now because they've come so close to losing several games, including the Cleveland Browns. I mean there were a couple missed kicks in that game that really helped put them over the top, and uh, you know. Uh, was it Baltimore, right? The Ravens, yeah, they were down <laughs> so, 10. They were down 10 there, you're and, right. And then also, that was a miss, wasn't there the missed kick at the end? Yeah, right? that would have put I an mean, overtime, correct. So, you know, they're 7-1, and one, but they... They've had some fortune. They've had some Much fortune. like the Super Bowl year, though. They had a lot of fortune on that right. way, that 13-game win streak. Yeah. But you're a national guy, and this is the first week nationally. I, I scour the national shows mm -hmm. all during the week, particularly on Mondays. This is the first week that most people are saying, okay, we know they were a contender. Now people are almost putting them as a Super Bowl favorite. I mean, it used to be, okay, the Rams were 8 no, the Chiefs were just rolling people, and they still are rolling people. Uh, and then you have the Patriots, who are always there. Now the Saints are actually being put in that conversation as opposed to being the tier below. Do you agree with them? I agree that they are an upper echelon team right now and a legitimate contender. I've felt that the whole season, but, you know, the national perception changes from week to week. Doesn't it <laughs> ever? Doesn't you know what I mean? Ever. I mean, especially in football, right? right? Because it's one game per week, and then, you know, it's like, I mean, there's so much flip-flopping going on. I mean, where were the Patriots when they were one and two, and where are they now? So, you know, it's just, uh, I, I don't want to put too much stock in the perceptions other than I cover them every week. I see how they compete. I think that they have some liabilities, especially on the defensive side of the ball, uh, that fans just need to be realistic and wary of. That right, it could sure. cost them. But I also think that, that Drew Brees is as good as he's ever been. 
you know, um, whatever, whatever decline in physical skill he's having because of his age, he's definitely overcoming with other aspects of his approach, uh, whether it's mental, um, game plan, routine, etc. He's very, very effective and still somehow underrated, in my opinion. He really is. Um, you know, I think that... Uh, Naturally. Yeah. I mean, Michael Thomas is as good as the receivers. I mean, offense, there's just no problem. With the, there's no liabilities on offense. Let's just put it that way. I mean, they're, they're fantastic. The one game they lost, they scored 40 points. I mean, you so. ha yeah, right. You have, <laughs> you have a Cadillac and a Corvette in Michael yeah. Thomas and Alvin Kamara. I mean, yeah. these two guys are truly special. Them, but you have a unique experience with Drew Brees because you have been here every Every single season he mm -hmm. has and, and I don't want to be cliche about this but this is 13 seasons you've seen him from 06 to now what do you see in him as a player difference wise and more importantly as a person that he was a kid when he got here mm -hmm. and now he's a, a, a digni the dignitary in, in the state of Louisiana and New Orleans and he's an ambassador for our city yeah he's uh, he's really been uh, an, it's just been extraordinary covering him because you like you say he's an ambassador for the city he's also kind of an institution within the city now. Yes, you know, I mean, if you think of all the charitable stuff and community related stuff he does, he represents the city, you know, abroad, but he also works hard for the city from within. I mean, yes. you know, you've, from Bree's family field to the, you know, he's very involved in basically two things with his uh, charitable efforts. I mean, he's, he's trying to help kids and, and, and education, but also a little bit um, hospitals too. So, uh, you know, with cancer and so forth. Right on. Um, I mean, those are, you, you can't get too much, much more noble causes than that. No question. And uh, yeah, he's been an enormous boon to the city um, in so many different ways and, um, and an incredible player at the same time, you know, and as he's, as his family has grown, to four kids, I've always been wondering, you know, I have one child and a hard enough time right. <laughs> managing no. it, but maybe I'm just not as organized as he is. <laughs> is <laughs> There's no one on earth more organized than Drew Brees. Yeah. Every, literally every minute of his day is accounted for, and I can attest to that yeah. because we've talked about him being on the show, mm -hmm. and it, it's regimented like I've never seen before. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's regimented, he's on schedule, he's on task, and he's very focused, and I, I don't know how he does it, but, you know, look, he's got... He's basically, he's got the same kind of mind as extraordinarily successful entrepreneurs, you know, it's just that he's a football player instead right now, you know, but to me, you know, I put him on par with, <laughs> I mean, not as crazy as Elon Musk, you know, right. maybe not as nerdy as Bill Gates, but to me, he's that, to me, he's that kind of no, personality, you know what I mean? He yeah. is, he's a dynamo. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, we take a lot of things for granted. Drew Brees is probably one of them, but we know some liabilities on this team. You know, they give up a lot of passing yards, and they're, they're susceptible to that. But is there anything we take for granted on this team? For me, it's the offensive line, because I think that they – it seems like year in, year out, they just seem to get the job done. He doesn't get sacked much. I know he's a quick release. But for you, what do you think is a, a spot on this team that they, is taken for granted? Uh, it's easy to take the offensive line for granted. I mean, linemen in general are taken for granted. It's almost the nature of the position. They're not. They're definitely not taken for granted by um, the team. by the running backs right. and, the, and the quarterback. You right. know, uh, but um, I mean, really, when you look at this offensive line, I mean, Max Unger is a former Pro Bowler who came from a Super Bowl contender in Seattle, and it was part of the Jimmy Graham trade. So think about the investment in in the offensive line. I mean, Jimmy Graham was part of the investment in Max Unger. Right. Was, obviously, they got the first round pick out of it, too, yep. which didn't pan out. Didn't pan out. But um, then... Uh, but we Ryan, still won that trade. Ryan Ramchick. <laughs> you know, Ryan Ram yeah, Ryan Ramchick. Might have been the second pick in that draft, but he was still first round, right? Um, Phenomenal. Yeah. Didn't miss a snap in his rookie year. Yeah. Andrus Pete, first round pick. Maybe not have been picked for that position, but he's a really strong athlete. And so, so you have two first rounders, you know, um, one in the, at left guard, one at right tackle. Uh, you've got a veteran solid with the Pro Bowl history for a contending team in Seattle at the center. You've got a free agent that you acquired in Larry Warford. And then Teron Armstead. And who, by the way, became a Pro Bowler right. last year. Larry Warford did. Right, right. And then Teron Armstead wasn't a first-round pick. He was more of a, uh, a gamble, but um, he had extraordinary athleticism from a small school. And let's face it, he is the second-highest paid player on the entire offense right now. So... Um, you know, he might be one of the most indispensable players on the team. Yeah, too. I mean, so, he's an extraordinary. Yeah, he's extraordinary. So player. Zach Streep, who I work with on Sundays, we gave your boys some love this week. <laughs> All, right. All right. Before I run out of time, I want to get some of these other things. This ball here is LSU. Um, 
listen, they've had an extraordinary year, and I don't want to take away from that because I think people always remember what happened to you last, and they forget about all the good stuff. But this week wasn't wasn't a great one. You were in Tiger Stadium. Uh, what was your take out of this game? Well, um, the pregame environment was extraordinary. Yes, tell me about that. <laughs> I want to hear some good stuff because I wasn't in town. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, I mean, clearly over 100,000 people on campus. And, I mean, you know, look, the stadium holds – and the announced crowd was almost 103, but it was way, way more than that. Okay? Right. I mean, the traffic was tremendous. I got probably I'm, had a couple hundred thousand people around the stadium. Honestly. Yeah, I made sure that I got there uh, four hours early because you know it's like I don't want the stress of sitting in traffic and thinking that I I might be getting close to kickoff. So, and I got caught in a traffic jam. You four know, hours at, before at 2:30 in the afternoon wow. for a seven o'clock game. Wow. Wasn't bad, you know, but I mean, still it was, I was, you know. It was slow. It was stop and go and everything like that, getting, in, getting into my parking area near the stadium. And uh, then I had a chance to walk around and just see the crowd, and the energy was really – the weather was perfect. The energy was high. There was a lot of hope in the air. Unfortunately, I think it was false hope. But, yeah. you know, I mean, the thing is, the great thing about sports is that if without hope, I mean, what is sports? I mean, it's played by human beings uh, who have, you know, vacillating biorhythms and, you know, skill sets that match up in different ways on different days. And they could be feeling well. They could be sick. They could have personal problems. I mean, you never know. A, quarter, a star quarterback can get a concussion in the first quarter or a star linebacker can get thrown out of a game. You know what I mean? So, like, that's Deep why. <laughs> by Brett Marcel. So, but that's why, you know, you can never rule out. I mean, that's why, you know, Purdue beats Ohio State. And, you know, people would keep asking me, does LSU have a chance in the game? I said, well, they have just as much chance as Purdue had of beating Ohio State. But, you know, uh, I may have. No, that may have been. Fans un- don't want to hear that because Purdue yeah. was unranked. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> LSU was but, supposed to be top five. Right, right. But, right. And, but I was saying, you know, to me, there was still that kind of gap between the teams, but you couldn't rule out a win. But that actually, when I, upon reflection, that may have been unfair to Alabama's defense because Ohio State's defense gets gashed once in a while. And you Al- know, in reality, Alabama's you're defense. right. The point spread for Purdue was, I think, only 13, and so, this was 14. Yeah. I mean, the odds, and the other thing is, you know, I, Look, the oddsmakers do get it wrong from time to time, but if you ever want to talk about, I mean, you have all these analysts who come on and say, I picked this guy, I picked that guy. You want to talk about people who put their money where their mouth is. Right. It's the oddsmakers. Yes. Like their whole livelihood depends on being able to recognize trends and statistics and, and, and really making a science out You're of it. You're in the locker room. So, uh, can they get off the mat right here? Because that's a tough loss. I mean, you got shut out yeah. and you got embarrassed. So they, can they you get can, off the mat with these next three games? They can get off the mat. Um, they're better than the rest of the teams they're going to play. And if they do run the table, uh, and um, you know, Ogeron is really good. He's never lost two games in a row, as everybody knows. He's very good at galvanizing the team. I mean, that's what he does. And uh, they're clearly better than the three teams they have left. And if they win the bowl game, that's an eleven and two season. It's a very that would strong, be remarkable. It's a very strong season. It it vastly exceeds expectations. It's just so strange to have a season that. Ex- where they, where they exceed expectations by a lot and at the same time lose ground right. to the one team that yeah. everybody wants to beat. Yeah, and <laughs> that, that, that is a chasm right now. Hey, <laughs> before I run out of time, once again, the Pelicans, I do go to every single game when I am in town, and I love the Pelicans. They've dropped six in a row right now. Uh, do you have a panic button hitting yet, or are you feeling like this is an 82-game season? Where are you sitting with this? Yeah, I wouldn't hit the panic button, but what's been exposed is that if AD is not 100% and they have another injury to a key player and they're on the road, which is hard to win in basketball, then it's a recipe for disaster for them. You know, I mean, AD had a bad game last night. Alfred Payton couldn't play. And, uh, you know, they just, and then they've just got to get rid of the turnover bug. Yeah. I mean, the last two games they probably could have won, really, if not for missed free throws and turnovers. So, you know, it's early in the season. And they've got to somehow, I mean, I don't understand where all these veteran turnovers are coming from, but they've got to somehow get that under control. Uh, you're right. I mean, even Golden State, each game, I honestly thought yeah. they, they had a chance to win. I'm not making excuses, but they lost all five. I think people were getting excited before the season, especially when they're 4-0. Hey, they can go 3-2, 4-1 on this road trip. This isn't any road trip. You had five playoff teams, and I, I remember publicly saying, if they went two, I'll be happy. They won zero. So uh, there is cause con- concern, but I am not a panic button pusher. Uh, I don't go off the thing because I know how long the season is, and I think they will get back on track. Uh, all they need is to get a little more confidence and get your point guard back. AD didn't play half those games. Uh, he missed the last one in New Orleans as well. I think things would be just fine. But, Brett, it's been a pleasure. We have some gifts we like to give here on this show. I don't know what you get on other shows, but first I'm going to give you this task performance shirt. I want you to feel this. Okay. I don't know how many you've had, but, man, when you put this on your skin, my mm-hmm. friend, 
I put it on six years ago. I have never taken it off. Yeah, I'm familiar with the company. I know it was a Tulane graduate, right? The founder. Al Andrews. And I have to drive on Earhart. Yeah, uh, so you see, you see it time. right there off Earhart yeah. Expressway. <laughs> I do as well. Uh, and here it says, get you a little start at Chase de la Chaise. That's just a starter. Get you some wine and, and a nice meal. That's. Have you been to the Chase de la Chaise one? That's the one on know. Maple Street. Not. No, it's not that one. Part of Delachaise, but it's you get table service there. I've it's, been it's in the great. original one, so. I appreciate you, Brett. Okay. Hey, I want to thank everybody. Rock and Doopsy, man, how fun was he? Uh, as always, and then Zach Harris, what a great young man from the Tulane Green Wave. Hey, we got Tyrone Hughes coming back next week. Haven't had him on to, for about a year, and you love when he gets a text from him because it says Tyrone Hughes, Saints H O F. That means Saints Hall of Fame. But he's going to come on. We got some other great guests for you. Hey, you want to thank Will. Hill, my producer, of course, Naila Jones and the Redhead Tsunami and everybody at WLAE and CST. We'll see you again next week on Primetime Sports.